All right, listen to this list. Madison, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, San Antonio, Portland, Oregon, Syracuse, New York. Yeah, those are some of the 16 cities in all of the U.S. singled out as the best American cities at using data to improve residents' lives. Joining us live to talk more about it is Mayor Ben Walsh. Mayor, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Happy to be with you, Jeff. Um, so I know that data-driven decisions have really been a key part of your administration. So this recognition from What Works Cities, that's what it's called, funded by Bloomberg uh, Philanthropies, why is it such a big deal? What's it mean when you hear Syracuse along with some of those other cities and just all this recognition brings to you? Well, it's very gratifying. Uh, I pride myself on, on making data-driven decisions. We have a, a team in our business of accountability, performance, and, and I challenge them that this, this is the high bar. This is the standard for cities that are focused on data. The worst city certification. So I challenged them. I said, I, I, I want to accomplish this uh, before the end of the term. And here we are uh, with the silver certification, one of only 40 cities nationwide. They started the certification and the only one in New York State. Um, give me an idea, kind of a tangible example of, um, take um, clear, clearing sidewalks, for instance, as, as to how data uh, has helped the city the most. And I'm assuming that that program's coming back uh, this winter, too. So how's that help you in something like that? It's a perfect example, Jeff. We all know that... Uh that our sidewalks need maintenance. When we first launched our sidewalk snow removal pilot program, the way we decided what sidewalks we were going to clear was based on usage data that we had uh, that we had compiled compiled with our parts. Uh, similarly, with uh, road paving, we look at uh, we have a rating system. So it's just again using data more often than not that's avail already available to you and using it to inform. Uh, your decisions. It's not rocket science, but it does make a significant difference in uh, in how we deliver services. Now that you've seen like something this like this can really work, this approach kind of really targeting rather than throwing that wide net out. Are there some newer things that you now have on your agenda that you'd like to use the same kind of approach for? The, the possibilities are endless, Jeff. We as we are uh, really uh, kicking our resurgent neighborhoods initiative strategy and in, uh, in the high gear we're using uh, almost a, an algorithm that uh, proximity to public transportation a percentage of home ownership to uh, among other criteria to prioritize what blocks and what those we're going to build new houses on so uh, that that's an area where I think you're gonna we're gonna see a lot more progress um, we're using it in our part of be more efficient in how we uh, complete work orders for maintenance in our parks. So again, it's really just taking the work that we already do and, and doing it more efficiently and effectively with the data that we are collecting. Um, so uh, even in uh, financial services, in our procurement, um, those are areas where you'll see it. So not the most exciting stuff, uh, but it should give peace of mind to our constituents that we're doing the best, uh, best we can with the data that we have. Um, while I have you here, let me, let me just change gears a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you've, you've heard us at our top stories there. Um, future of 81, everybody's been waiting for this uh, final DEIS, kind of the, the final real plan as to what the 81 um, area is going to look like through the city there. Um, what do you know about its likely release tomorrow, uh, this final plan? Um, any big changes that you know of away from the community grid or in addition to what we've already seen? We are expecting the DEIS to be released tomorrow. Uh, I do expect, although, you know, uh, and see what comes out, but I, I don't expect any significant change in terms of the preferred alternative. I do believe it will be the community. And as I've said all along, it's not the perfect option, but it's the best option. And now is the time to stop talking about uh, other potential scenarios. We know using data, just talked about before, we know that that's the best option. And so now we need to focus our efforts on how we maximize the opportunity and how we address some of the shortcomings of it. Um, good news for you. I mean, are you, I mean, I guess we're all kind of anticipating like, when is this going to come out? Now it's there that triggers the public comment. I mean, we kind of got to get moving on this, don't you think? And maybe this even addresses even further concerns from some of those suburbs as well. I believe it will. I've said from the beginning that the concerns that we're hearing from our suburban neighbors uh, are um, are important, and and I do believe that the that the revised DEIS uh, will address some of those concerns, and we can continue to do that. But we what we can't afford to do is to spend any more time second guessing or introducing new options. We've done our diligence.
You know what the best option is? Now we need to maximize this once in a generation opportunity, just a million dollars uh, on infrastructure here in our community and put people to work. Mayor Ben Walsh, I, I've always got a million topics for you, but, uh, but but we will leave it there for tonight. I really appreciate you stopping by. Certainly uh, exciting news about the What Works Cities. Um, and we will, uh, I guess all of us, wait to see what that DEIS, I know it's a big document, what that's going to uh, say tomorrow uh, for all of us. It will impact generations to come. Thanks for being with us, Mayor. Thank you, Jeff.